guest, the man who looks more and more daily like a 2022 version of the PG's Perry Gibb. John Hudson is here for the Unbiased UFO Report. How you doing, buddy? Good. You know, I just oh, yeah. wonder, Dave, is how much of your audience has any clue who Barry Gibb was or was even alive when he was popular? I'd be vastly curious to see what those statistics are. But how are you, well, my friend? According to our statistics, our highest audience level is between the ages of 40 and 60. Oh, really? Really? Yes. Really? And that's our kindergarten second, educated, uh, right? And high, uh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody, everybody knows who the Bee Gees is, who's listening to this show, man. Okay. You know, hey, you say so. We're, we're like you, man. We're just trying to stay to stay alive, stay alive. Hey, look, I, I'm just, I, I, I've, I, I'm just happy you know about more bands than Vernacular Ladies. You know, so it's all good. There he is, mm-hmm, Mr. Barry Gibb, right there. Look how beautiful he looks. Look how beautiful he looks. All right, let's move on here, John. Not much in the UFO news out there, which is a rarity right now, but a couple of very impactful stories that are coming down the pike here in regards to, uh, you know, number one, drones, and number two, whether or not the Pentagon wants to kind of hide these files. Where do you want to start with this tonight, man? Well, I'll, first I want to start with the drone one because the drone one is another one of these articles. And, you know, if, if you guys don't like me reporting on some things this way, please let me know. But I find this more fascinating is it's often not the content of the article that is the most important part. It's other aspects of the article being released and how they impact and how they feel and what they impact, like, to me is a bigger deal. So in the case of this article, this is an article coming out on the Hill, right, at today, right? So this is, you know, saying, hey, there were drones swarming the Navy and and the navy didn't know what they were and some people think they were ufos no one has any clue and you're reading this article thinking hmm this seems really familiar and then you notice that they're sourcing the drive throughout their article right and you're like hey the drive i know the drive and then you realize that the entire article is talking about an event that happened back in 2019 okay this is something that we already bit into and chewed on a year ago right but Right now, one, because of the fact that there is a bit of a vacuum of articles and partly two, because you now have a bunch of new media groups that are suddenly having to source UFO articles and have never had to do so before. You have people like The Hill basically grabbing this old news from 2019, shining it up, you know, making it look all pretty and presenting it as essentially current, in your face, important to read news. And to me, that's almost more amazing than even the original drone story was. I mean, why is the Hill so desperate to write an article? This is now the second time in two weeks this has happened. I know. I mean, this I is a this is a dangerous pre precedent, a good precedent, but a dangerous yes. precedent, considering the fact that we are recycling news stories now. This is now the second one that's been recycled. The first one, if if you don't remember, was just about a week and a half ago, where it was announced that NASA had yeah. You know, right. called in 24 theologians yeah. and religious scholars to discuss yeah. life after or out, out in outer space. Is humanity and religion re re ready for ET contact? Well, we yep. know that, that study happened six years ago. Yeah, so and actually... Oh, sorry, please go ahead. No, f finish, please. I was going to say, but the really interesting thing is that these two situations might actually be the same phenomenon, or they could actually be totally two totally different phenomenons being the catalyst for those two events. And either one of those scenarios turned out to be quite interesting. Well, I think it also shows how I got to put this carefully because there's some very good journalists working this story, but I think it shows the ignorance of this subject of how much or how little they really know outside of Luis Elizondo, the Pentagon, Chris Mellon, and Harry Reid. And yeah, maybe yeah. sprinkle a little David Fravor and Alex Dietrich on there for dessert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and they, just, they, they, don't, they don't know enough people. They don't know enough different people to be able to have any sort of a gut check, to have any sort of a, of a, of a, of a, of a back check to be able to call up a cousin and be like, hey, I know you're into this. What do you think of this, right? Like, like most people haven't built out those networks yet. 
but there are stories out there that need to be told. Okay. True. I'm I'm thinking, why aren't they interviewing any type of scientist who's part of the SCU? They're doing media availability right now. Why not get a hold of MUFON? Why not get a hold of Peter Davenport from New Fork? Let's get a, if, if we need a new story on this, it's not about, I mean, the many people in the media keep treating this story, John, like it is a United States Navy and U.S. military problem. It's They're not-, not in the media going through and saying that there is other, there are other people out right. there investigating the phenomena. Right. Right. I understand the sexiness of the U.S. military now clashing with UAP. That's a sexy Hollywood story. It really is. All right. But while everybody is buckled up and button-lipped, you if you want to continue to run the story, use your imagination. Go to different angles. Right. But in the case of this one, in the case of this one, and, and you you have far more experience in this world than I do, so you tell me, but how plausible is it that someone said, look, um, we have a gap. We need to try something new. Hey, we need to experiment more with these UFO stories, but we don't want to take any risks. Let's go back and let's find an article that we know hit big on a lot of different mainstream uh, mainstreams. And it's something that we, can, we, we know we should get a certain number from. And let's use that as a litmus test. Let, let's, let's run that story and see what kind of numbers we get so that we can figure out whether we have an audience for this material or not. Is that possible? Okay, good, good question. Yes. It is possible, but it's what we call the follow-up. So what okay. we do is we take an old story and make it new again with new quotes, new information, oh. and everybody, everything like that. So that's how you do it. You just right. don't rehash and replay right. Uh, right. Uh, right. another video like it's an episode of Friends or right. Frasier. Right, right, right. right. And I still, think in the, I still think in the previous case, that one – came off that one seemed a lot more malicious and sneaky to me than than this one does this one seems like it, it could happen more pragmatically accidentally um it, it, through ignorance and so forth this to me seems more human more 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 typical human behavior it does it does but i think it's what still it, a problem what it, i think what but, it is, you know. is we have an editor who wanted a ufo story probably said hey what's this all about let's take a look at it and ran with it i think that's and, what happened. and i agree and, and let me be really clear here if i were to be talking to that gentleman right now i would not throw any shade his way whatsoever i applaud him for printing anything about the ufo topic especially if it's accurate <laughs> right i mean even i don't you know i'd rather him not be retaining old stories but honestly i'm very happy to see the hill producing these pair so you know i i mean no ill will toward, toward his way yeah yeah exactly and i agree yeah. with you we need it we need it but i because any type of information look the hill being mostly an online type of of of, of journalism they need the hits that's why they're doing it okay they need the hits that's their revenue that's for where they get their advertising from from how many people who are hitting it but what I'm saying is these journalists who are covering this subject need to understand that there are other people besides who TTSA gave us, all right, to talk to. It's not always about the politicians. We do have a lot of scientists. Like, why not interview Jacques Vallée? Why not interview Gary Nolan? Why not ev- interview I, Kevin? I really, I really believe it all comes down to this risk versus reward scenario, Dave. I really do. I think they're just gun shy. I think they're just they, they have no faith, they have no confidence in their ability to to shake down or to 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 do any kind of a break analysis of anyone to decide is this a safe person. Now, true, I agree with you. Jacques Vallée is kind of like a well, duh. I mean, how can you not bring Jacques Vallée on? And it, it's a damn shame they don't bring someone you know really safe on like that. Um, especially because on a good day, Jack Jack Vallée isn't safe, which is what makes him so much fun. Um, but um, but you know, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I think that there's aspects of that, but ultimately, in the end of it, you know, it, it, this is just part of the process. It, it, but it's the here's what I'm saying is it's the wrong part of the process. Oh, you all don't right? think it's a necessary part of the process? No, I don't think it's necessary at all. Oh, okay. 
I okay. think what it is is it's it it's, it shows ignorance and laziness. Yeah. All right. When I was in journalism, man, we were always looking for an angle. All right. What makes George Knapp such a great reporter is none of his stories are the same. They may be the same topic, but they're never the same. There is mm -hmm. always something new. Yep. Okay. Yep. And there's always somebody else to interview. Yep. It's not always the same talking heads giving the same speech. If these journalists were actually doing their job in covering this, which they would have got in their meetings, had the heads of, you know, their editorial meetings, had the heads basically say, John, okay, we need some UFO stories. We're getting a lot of hits on these stories, millions of hits. We need to bring this information. Yeah. The first thing I would be doing as a journalist is looking for the different angles of how we can tell this story. We know that there's nothing coming out of the Pentagon right now. We know there's nothing coming out of Elizondo right now. We know there's nothing coming out of Mellon right now. Okay. So then, then that begs the question, if then someone does re respin a story and doesn't do what you just said, which sounds very logical to me, and I would assume would be the norm, right? Then why wouldn't they do that? What, what would be their motivation for releasing a story reasons. and not making a change? Two reasons. Number one, ignorance. Number two, laziness. That's it. Okay. They're not right. they're not being told not to run it because they've okay. already Fair. run it. Right. Yeah, no, agreed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed. 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 All right. Story number two that you have for us tonight, John. And there was a big article in the Liberation Times about this regarding, so this... Oh, yeah, regarding Sorry. the Pentagon spokesperson attempting to avoid congressional UFO legislation is susan go in trouble again <laughs> so okay so first off before i get you know let's start laughing at things um very nice article um um by uh, by christopher sharp uh, as many of you may may already know him from uh, interactions on twitter and so forth and his previous writings um you know it's, it's a great article I, I really recommend everyone check it out yeah so where things immediately get very 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 interesting is that what he's reporting is that um, evidently, and it wasn't clear to me whether this was, um, this was a, a verbal statement or this was a written statement on the, on the part of, of, of Susan, but it, that what Susan go is basically on the record is saying is that the, the program that the Pentagon claimed that they already had the one that we all laughed about, the one that we talked about, like said it was the same thing, but it wasn't really the same thing. And it was just pretending to be the same thing, that thing. She's now still trying to tell people that that's the exact same thing as what was in the congressional bill. And this is, this is a really an astounding thing because, you know, you could understand someone doing this before uh, it all came out, but now it's all out. So it's pretty easy for someone to just go look at them and look at the difference. So, uh, I'm really confused as to why Susan Go is doing this because um, it's very easily checked, and um, you know you can say it's raining as many times as you want. If it's sunny outside, you're not getting wet. So um, you know I I I just I'm I'm in awe, and and to me to me it honestly um, it honestly it, to me it honestly makes me feel a little bit sorry for 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 her because to me there, there's there's no way that she's not aware of this. So she's being forced to do this. So someone is telling her, even though they know it sounds ridiculous, even though they know it makes them not look very smart in certain circles, they're telling her she must do this. And for what reason? I, 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 I have no clue, no clue whatsoever. I have, to me, this is all risk and no reward. Do you think it's because they want to try and shut down the discussion they want the they don't want their stories open remember how many times i've mentioned to you over the last year about this ufo pandora's box that the pentagon would obviously not want to open up not only to other governments and militaries of the world but mainly to its own citizens do you think it has anything to do with that john pure speculation i know Yeah, 
Yeah, and, and it could even be a mix of things, you know. I mean, it's it's um yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I think I think it's kind of hard to say. Okay, so with with that being said, you know, Susan Go continues to fight the good battle for her team, which is basically everybody who is an alphabet agency at the Pentagon. Right, but the thing you got to remember is it is it is it you can have you can have two cohabitating parties. So, so, so for example, you could have like a group within the Pentagon that really doesn't want disclosure to happen for very specific reasons. And then you might have another larger group of people that doesn't really care about that, but as a general policy, doesn't want to set any kind of precedent with letting Congress set policy up for our own internal organizations. And, you know, and so we need to keep this on our side of the house because we need to be able to control it. We need to be able to manage it. We need to be able, be able to, to, you know, curtail whatever information comes out of it. And so we're best off taking ownership of this. Like, is it like, which, which, like, where does it fall? You know what I mean? Well, I understand that, but I mean, she's getting a lot of egg put on her face here by the comments that she's making, yet she stands staunchly that this is the reason that they're doing it. And when you look at it all, if you ask me, the only people that they are trying to shut down is the public, but they don't want the media talking about this. They don't want elected officials talking about oh, yeah. this, no. and no, they no. don't want the public asking them questions about national security or future yeah. technology. No, yeah, no, and they they don't they they um, it, independent of any in, of any specific goals, they have absolutely zero interest in losing control of the story. They, they feel an absolutely absolute, They feel it is imperative to the national security of the United States that they control the story as much as possible. Who benefits from that? The military industrial complex. That's it. Um, and even for them, it's kind of indirect. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, like I said, that part of me wonders if essentially it, it's only a small group that really has some kind of specific goal, and the rest of the group is just going along with it just because they they just feel as a as a as a as a method of principle that they shouldn't let Congress do this. You know what I'm saying? Like like I've been in situations like that where I've won a lot of people onto my side, not because they agreed with with my my mission, but because they agreed with the concept of what I was trying to do, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you can you can regain a lot of followers by widening the scope of what you're actually after. Um, and I I just you know and and the, the, I, you know, the and the thing is is it is it the other thing we don't know is it is it is it is this is this one of or two things Could, is. Is this just that they want to be able to manipulate what is being said? Or do they actually believe that by asserting this the way they're doing, that they could actually affect reality and could actually um, lessen the authority of the congressional group? Like, do they actually, that's what I don't know. Is it, is this just rhetoric? Is it? Is this just all talking? Is this just all you know, one up and ship? You know, like just all, but all verbal, right? Or do they actually believe that this may have a material impact on how that congressional unit turns out? And that I don't know. The second scenario scares me far more. The first scenario I consider to be human behavior. The second scenario I think is a little more worrisome. Okay, so let's we got about two minutes left. Let's delve into this second scenario. Well, I mean, it, I mean, uh, I sorry, you know, I sorry, I, I didn't get to sleep. Remind me again what we were just talking about. Well, we were talking. You were mentioning two scenarios regarding w what the purpose is of you know this entire cover up is, and Susan Go still in denial. 
Well, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, sorry. So what, so what I was saying was that is it you know it. Well, it's very frustrating. I what I what I I just I don't know if if. Okay, so I don't know of any way legally that they could get any of the rules changed for what Congress is putting forth because what Congress is putting forth is written into law. What what the Pentagon had in place was just them creating it themselves like any company creates a division or, or a department or, or a business plan or anything like that. They just created it out of thin air, whereas on Congress side, it was written into law. And so I... I, I think, and I could be wrong. I think all they can do is really is 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 hurt the reputation of it, hurt the the credibility of it, hurt it, um, hurt its feelings, <laughs> shall we say? Right. Um, I don't think that there's anything they can do material wise to it, but I must confess I don't know that for sure because I don't know. Like I like for example, this is a snare where they could. If there's an aspect of the bill that is left up to interpretation and the person doing the interpretation feels strongly one way or the other, you could see that interpretation falling one way or the other in favor or against transparency or in favor or against disclosure or take your pick a field, right? No, very true. Very true. And it's going to be interesting to see how everything plays out over the next six months until that first report comes out. Because if yes. that report comes out and it is completely van vanilla that we're back to swamp gas and hot air balloons, I think we're going to know that there is a real war of words going on. And that first report is done, I believe, uh, at the end of June, around June 25th, once again. I got to admit, Dave, if, if they if they if they really if they really go full force and try to really try to whitewash this whole thing. I will be shocked. I really will be. I, I will be shocked. I will be shocked and I will be and I will laugh because I think it'll be I think it'll be absolutely drop dead hilarious that they actually think that everyone's that stupid. Well, we'll soon find out, John. We will soon we will. find out. All right, John Hudson and the unbiased UFO report. 